Welcome to the Accounting Technology Fireside Chat Podcast. Now, sit back and enjoy while Nick and Trevor help you use your technology to make money and delight your clients. Well, good morning and welcome to the Accounting Technology Fireside Chat Podcast. Good morning, oh, Trevor. Wow. <laughs> that brightens up my day. Oh, there we are. Thank there we are. You, you, I know you like the fairy noise. I do like the fairy noise. <laughs> Deep down, the big so old I, fairy. <laughs> once, once again, another another podcast in lockdown, but it doesn't really bother us because we don't meet to do these anyway, do we? No, we just do it all online. We've done. We worked together so, for ten years like this. It we was. Have. It doesn't make any difference. Uh, well, our chief developer was based in Brazil. You know, um, you know it's sort of like yeah. So when yeah. I when I worked at Microsoft back in um, two thousand, um, we were running global virtual teams already then. So yeah, very, a lot of the people I interacted with were remote, and I never met them. And I remember going to conferences and meeting someone you'd worked with for a couple of years, and going, "Oh, now I know what you really look like," and, and that kind of stuff. So everyone yeah. else is getting used to that now. The only thing I found is people are shorter than I think when they're on a camera. I see them in maybe, person. I go, "Oh, wow, you're a bit shorter than I thought." <laughs> Don't know. It's a little thing I've got. Maybe you're taller than you think you are. There we go. No, are. no. <laughs> I just, I, it's the one thing that I've noticed that after doing all these meetings and, that, and I meet someone, I go, "Hmm, thought you might have been taller than that." There you go. Now, talking <laughs> about meetings, and and this is going to be fascinating today. We're talking all about note taking. Yeah. And I'm really interested in this because it's a, it's an in, it's a, an area that we've got to cover off. And especially if you're in the accounting industry, um, you know, we had a situation the other week where we had a meeting and uh, the notes were taken on a piece of paper and nobody had put them into the system and we've lost the notes. So very embarrassingly, we've got to go back and have another intro meeting with the client to go through a few oh, things so that's awesome now i've yeah. i've i've historically i've done that too so i remember when i started um in industry way back when in the, the you know when when windows 95 was actually pre windows 95 was when i started in industry but we won't talk about that um and and i was a, a smart kid and i never ever took notes and as I got more mature and realized the mistakes I was making um, I actually started becoming a, a, a an avid note taker and I've I've split between on various times sitting down with a moleskin notebook and a fountain pen and I have probably 40 or 50 moleskin notebooks full of notes and I find with those although I'm great at taking notes because I like getting out my I like writing with a fountain pen it's a throwback to school um, I never read them again right it's it's just taking notes and, and there they are and they sit there, yeah, and there, there I, yeah. I, I, occasionally I'll open one of those books and I went wow that was a really good idea I had 15 years ago that would have made us lots of money which we never <laughs> actually did anything with so exactly exactly. <laughs> But, but then when I walk into a client and I open up my laptop, where, so the, the way I take notes now when I'm working remote is I'll open a copy of Visual Studio Code and I'll write my notes in something called Markdown, which is a, right. a textual format, where the formatted text, which I, I know how to write really rapidly. So that's how I take notes when I'm away when i'm by myself and nobody can see what i'm doing but i find if you open up a laptop in front of clients they don't like it do they me oh, bless you <laughs> oh, turn that one off <laughs> well done COVID. You button just before see yeah right i did it you victorians i know what you like. we know we know how to do it um yeah it's uh yeah it's hay fever season so now we've got hay fever on top of COVID. i get hay fever for the last two weeks and i know it every time we lived in Queensland. When we lived in mm -hmm. Queensland, I didn't get hay fever for these last two weeks of August. Now we've moved back. I've got it again. And it's some, uh, it's a wattle or it's, you know, like the, the amount of pollen that flies around Victoria this time of the year is absolutely crazy. You know, like the top of the pool is just pollen. So you wonder wow. why we all get hay fever. It's, um, yeah, and it's an extra, extra good season this year. So that that's frightening everybody. We're getting all these messages now on TV. It may not be. Hey, fever. <laughs> it could yes. be COVID. Get tested. It's like, I haven't been anywhere. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we digress. Once we again, digress. Sorry. Testing. So, notebooks. Yes. And I like, um, I get stuck between the whole thing of sitting in a meeting and writing and typing um, away is annoying 
for the client. And when I said to my IT tech, I said, you're on the call to take the notes. Why didn't you take the notes? He said, my keyboard's too loud. I'm going to have to get a quieter keyboard because it's a real, and I said, it is annoying. He's got one of those gaming keyboards that it sounds seriously like it's going, you know, a four, oh, four really, inch press. Really yeah. clickety ones, yeah. Yeah, which they all love. And I said, well, you know, that's what we've got to have a look at because it it it's it's a balancing act. You know, I remember the first time someone sat with me and did a note taking on one note, I they were more intrigued in what they were doing on one note than the conversation, and I felt like they weren't engaged in the conversation. So that uh, you know, yeah, it's, it's, you got a balancing act there. It, it is. So I like I like the tablet. So I've got a Surface Book at the moment, and one of the nice things about the Surface Book is I can remove the top screen, turn it round, lay it down like a piece of paper on the desk, pick up my stylus and write in one note as if I'm writing in paper. And I find if I'm sitting in front of somebody, which I'm in New South Wales, so I haven't done for nine weeks, but if I was sitting in front of somebody, I could actually take a note, take notes while they're there. I can show them the notes I'm taking. It's very transparent what I'm doing yeah. with them. And I think, I think that's what concerns people when you sit in a meeting and you open up your laptop you're really hiding yourself away from interacting in the meeting. And I think well, you're putting a barrier up, aren't you? You've yeah. got a physical barrier in front between you and the client. So, so talking of one note taking apps, so I've yeah, really religiously, if I'm not running in Moleskine notebooks, I'm running in one note. Um, yeah. There's some other ways I note take now, but that's more from being a developer, but right. One note, I have my notes going back over 15 years now. I first saw OneNote back with, I think it was Windows XP Tablet Edition, where a friend of mine had a very early HP tablet PC with a stylus and was taking, and OneNote came out for that back in the days of XP. So that would be 2002. People started using, OneNote first appeared in 2002, and it, it, it's grown ever since. And uh, it, it's superb, and it's got some amazing features. But what I really like is being able to crack into OneNote and search notes I've written for the last yeah. 20 years, right? Just bang. I, I knew I thought about that some stage. Where is it? Bang, there it is. I can, I can look at it. Um, and I love the ability to be able to print to OneNote, so if I've got a document or I've got a web page, I can print it to OneNote and it appears and I can scribble all over it. I think that's just super awesome. Another thing for that is that we really, we should investigate OneNote for work papers then with that situation because that's mm -hmm. a, that's something that we need to consider going. There was, someone asked me that the other day um, for the people I did some training with last week. Uh, <laughs> there's your solution. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll get in touch with them. but. So, so we're sitting down, and I agree with you one hundred percent. Like we use, and that's where I, I use the paper. I have a I have a book on my desk when I'm sitting down with someone, and I just go, and it's just oh, I've got to remember that, and I go, but I always yep. try and transfer that into a OneNote, put it in an email, communicate back to the client. Oh, this is what we talked about. Blah blah blah. Do those sort of things. So it's 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 in electronic format. So here's a question for you. Have you ever used Microsoft Lens on your mobile device? Yes, yes. Okay, so Microsoft Lens is a free app on your mobile device that yep. allows you to scan documents from your mobile phone, effectively. And yep. you can scan those straight into OneNote, right? Uh, see, another step. So, oh, I learned so, step. so I could take so, a photo of that. But does it convert, yep. the, convert your handwriting to text? It does convert your handwriting to text. It absolutely does, which is really cool, right? Um, so good. you can you can basically do that, and your hand, your hand. In some cases, I'm only if you're sure if you're a doctor, it wouldn't work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> My teachers used to tell me that really smart people have bad handwriting because their brain works faster than their hand, just to make me feel good. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we're we're still coming back to OneNote every time. We're, yeah. we're going in there, we're doing one. You can record, which, you know, it works when you're having a group discussion about something. Just hit record, go through, but you've got to tidy re it up. I was having a. Re re oh. Remember, you should tell people if you're recording a meeting. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so it's it's really important that you say, you know, is it okay if I record this before you do? But yeah, you can you can have your device open, you can crack open one note. You, I do this very often. Um, I hit record. I'm either somebody's working on the whiteboard. I'll I'll just video it, 
um, and then I've got it. Or I'll use Office Lens, which is really good at taking photos of whiteboards and realigning them, um, and then save that into OneNote, and then that page is there, and I just put it into the discussion. And that kind of stuff makes it... It, it means you don't lose... You, you can, If you think about it, you know, I'm, I don't know what your charge-out rate is, but let's guess you're... I know you're more than this, but let's guess you're 200 bucks an hour. I get four of you in a meeting for an hour. That's yeah, 800 bucks I've just spanked. I, I want some output out of that, right? I don't yeah. want you just to have a talk fest. So that gives you a way of pulling things together. And, and I, I know people take notes and minutes in meetings and you have other people taking notes. I like to take my own notes because they mean more to me, right? Mm -hmm. No, I was. Just, Especially I if you're do, I do take my own notes, but I was just trying to blame someone for why we lost the bloody notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, I was reading. I was reading on some. Uh, we did some did some notes together, and I was re just reading it beforehand to sort of go through because I, you know, we developed. We did a case study, and we got together and we talked about the case study. And in the case study, we we you know during that time, the first part was we recorded what we said. So yeah. I just went blur and went through it, but. Um, it, it's quite interesting to reread a couple of weeks later <laughs> what comes out. Um, and somehow our team put that into a document that was a, a good case study. But it saved me a lot of time. And I know you've written books by using voice to text. Yeah, so Word has built in um, uh, and, and OneNote has it as well. Microsoft's got this superb um, voice to text engine. In fact, um, it exists across the Microsoft suite. So I did, I'll, I'll give you one example which blew me away. Um, I was meeting a Vietnamese government delegation and giving them a presentation. And I knew some of the audience would have English and some of the audience wouldn't. So in PowerPoint, I got it to live translate right from my speaking to vietnamese and put vietnamese captions at the bottom of the presentation in powerpoint not in teams in, in, no, so, so in powerpoint so i was live physically with these guys right giving yeah. a powerpoint presentation i fired up powerpoint and i said powerpoint give me captions so close captions and make them in vietnamese and it took what I was saying, it translated it into Vietnamese, and it put captions up in Vietnamese on the screen. But the PowerPoint was in English, but the wording you put in there didn't change no, that, but only what, what you I, said. What I said went into Vietnamese. You'll notice also in Teams, if somebody's um, presenting a PowerPoint now, not sharing the screen, but actually presenting the PowerPoint, Teams has an option for you to translate the PowerPoint into whatever language you want. <laughs> Very cool. And then put up captions in whatever language you want in real time. So you can start participating with non-English speakers in, in real time. So the other all, thing I didn't talk all about. All people with a disability come on. We, we uh, you know, yeah. I work with the Deafness Foundation and they, we've been educating them on, uh, you know, on a bit with teams because they're bored, half their board are deaf. Well, and of course, you just put captions on teams. They put captions in it. No, it's funny. Some, yeah. some of the things come through. It says biscuits instead of whatever. But, um, they are really using that because and they can they can go through it but all but i didn't know you could do presentations so that's another bit of information i'll pass on to them which is the reason we have this accounting fire, technology fires our chat yeah so talk about this kind of stuff so the other thing people don't get with one i talked about taking personal notes but we can both share a one note document in real time yes and we've done that before where we both had to go to different meetings and we've sat there and taken notes and communicated together because we we're in separate meetings that were really important to both of us you remember that yep i do i do absolutely absolutely <laughs> and we've done lots of that and you can see where nick's taking notes or trevor's taking notes and you can work on both of them at the same time which is really effective although flies in the face of actually being physically present in a meeting and and one of the things you know i've got to say even when note taking or anything else the key thing about being in a meeting is to actually really be there don't be, don't be typing things on your computer. Don't be doing what Trevor's doing right now and surfing the net. Don't be. I'm not. I'm not. I'm looking at my. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm testing it, recording what I'm saying, yeah, and seeing what it's coming up with. So I'm just looking at it, and having a bit of a giggle because it's uh, okay. So, I must so Word, Word has a well. feature I, I use a lot um, when we do things like this. Um, in that, I'll take the audio file from this podcast. I'll upload it to Word and get Word to transcribe it into text. Yeah. Um, and then I can actually post a transcription in the metadata about the tag so people can search our podcast and find words and things which interest them inside it, which is kind of funky and cool. Hmm. So, so, note so note taking 
fundamentally my view is you need a tablet device, right? You need something yeah. that you can write on. Um, so Mac's not going to cut it, right? <laughs> just, just no touch just, just, just not great note-taking devices. Um, you need something you can write on so that people feel you're really there. And the best thing we found to date is OneNote to do it. Yeah, yeah. But don't they have like Evernote and like you see those ones, you see uh, the things where they've got like, it's like a, it's thin like a piece of paper and you've got a pen and you can, you know, write away on and all that sort of stuff. But, uh, you know, does that, I've yeah, never so I've even a, tried it. I've, I've got an e-paper tablet. Um, it's a Books. It's from a Chinese company. And there's a thing called a Remarkable as well, which I'm not as much of a fan of. Um, but the Books allows me to write, it's really good in bright sunlight so you can grab that out i use it for i go out and assess other referees and i, I use that for writing in bright sunlight beautiful e-paper so it uses almost no battery it's lovely I've got a beautiful stylus with it in fact i bought a lamy stylus with it which is just really nice and and i write on that but that converts everything to one note for me so i'm still falling still going back, back, to, one. back and, to one note. and i think that's the whole point that where we where we come to where microsoft's done a great job with teams is yep. where do you store all your one notes and that's why one note's so powerful because you can then use teams to store and add one note so we for example will have a team for a project and the project yep. will have its own one note but we'll also add in our our group uh one note that we all use our general biz tech team um one yep. note and we put that in there so for we start with meetings and we've got the pages and that that we've got within there but we're talking to accountants as well and I think that there's a real opportunity. And, and I remember we had the, do you remember the accounting firm in um, in Sydney were using OneNote for work papers? Yes. And they created templates for their OneNotes. And then yeah. from that, they've generated. And when you talked just before then about where you can get a, a document and email the document or put the document straight in or take a use um, one, one uh one lens, one lens. I've gone a brain dead now. Uh, uh, office lens, or office I think it's lens. called Mi Microsoft lens now. Yeah, I've got too many ones, and they've they've changed the name. But yeah, I think it's Microsoft lens that does it. And it's about getting it into one place, and again, having one place to sort it out. Because, and then the ability to search for what you've said within yep. a document and find that document. It's all coming back to that whole concept. Whatever you use to capture the information, get it into. OneNote, which is in yes. Teams, which is in SharePoint, which means you can search for it, you can find it, and you're keeping the record of all that information at yeah. any time. Hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's... Yes. So what about you've got on in a team session, you've got a note-taking part within there? Uh, that's OneNote. That's being driven by OneNote behind it. So every team you create creates an Office 365 group and actually creates a SharePoint site for you and actually mm. creates a OneNote notebook for you. So if you upload files, that goes into a document library and a SharePoint site with a OneNote notebook. So it's all integrated. Remember when we, we, we've been talking to customers about you know, SharePoint sites and sharing with customers, what you can do that you can drive that through Teams. And, yeah. and kind of my, my view on it, I've been working with a school um, and the school's got a team for every lesson. Yeah. Uh, no, sorry, for yeah, so for every subject, sorry, every subject's got a team. And then the teachers create lessons within that team. So if you go into your subject, you can see all your lessons, you can see your notebook, you can see you know, all your files, everything's in one place, but it all lives on a SharePoint site because we're using Teams. People don't have to think about oh, creating a SharePoint site, creating permissions, doing that kind of stuff. Neat thing about that is you can start inviting your custom, your clients in to participate. Yeah, and I do yeah. that. We, we do we do a lot of that where we invite them in and we've got our other area that we don't have them in, but we've got um, certain parts and permissions and that that they they yeah. definitely can come in and see exactly what's going on. Very quickly, they go and create their own Teams environment because they're starting to learn it and then, yep. they, and then they're using that and now we're accessing their Teams sites and so forth, which is really good. Yeah, which is super. It just aids that collaboration, especially with larger clients. With little clients, you might do an ITR for, maybe not. But for, yeah. for larger clients who are a bit more complex, it just makes more sense, right? And it shows you, you've got a kind of richer experience with them. It, it doesn't have to be, you know, oh, I, I work with Mary, for example, and I've got to phone. Mary's not in. I've got to wait for her, blah, blah, blah. I can put a message on Teams and we're, we're done. And, and you can have the team invite them in, create a private channel that just you 
and your accounting team working that the clients doesn't yep. have access to. Absolutely. Um, and I think that's you can do all of that. You can create all those permissions within team and you can have your one note that you've got within there and you, you can't split your pages up though, can you? You can't say, well, that page is only available for this no. channel or something no, like that. Yeah. No, that's not how it works. So what you would say do is what I said before, you'd have your overall team one note that you're all yep. working on together and capturing where you're talking together and you've only got access, you create your private channel that you only work in and you add the team notebook into that private yeah, channel. Yeah, you, you add a new notebook into that and you have your little private area. You go you go yeah. work in and do stuff that the client doesn't And then you've got your one. Yeah, yeah. Um, like we've done a lot of stuff in that, especially for the larger projects where we really do a lot of design work and images and we push everything in there and we communicate together. Um, you know, you, you can draw pictures yep. with your stylus um, on your surface. Yeah, so so touchscreen stylus, really important for the business world, I think. Mm. So, and I, I get Steve Jobs went, I'll never have a stylus as long as I live. Yeah, whatever, Steve. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm watching um, Liam, my son's doing some graphic design work and all that sort of stuff. And he, I'm going to go find one. He's bought, He's got this little glove thing that he puts on his... Uh, pinky and his uh, ring finger and his yeah. right hand so it doesn't doesn't mark on the screen oh, that's it's really cool. cool yeah i've got to go and find one of those and so he can then just he just he does because he does a lot of like straight drawing and so forth onto a yep. uh, onto a uh, not i don't even know what it is it's some sort of um graphic design pad something like that but anyway that's just cool. another thing if you do get caught with that you don't like using the stylus because it leaves a mark or something and you can't follow it through there are things to learn and things to know but the, the the message of today is get whatever notes you've got into the system into yeah. teams into one note as fast as you possibly can if you still want to take notes like i do great idea use office lens or microsoft lens to take a photo of that and push that into the one note so that you've got you're still capturing that information. Yeah, it's not sitting in shred, a book. Shred, shred, shred that note if you want to, right? And the big thing is, you know, you've been working with electronic receipts for a while now. You take a picture yeah. of your receipt, you add it to zero, you get rid of that piece of paper. You don't need it anymore. Same yeah. with your notes. That means you can get kind of a scratch pad that you write your notes on. At the end of the meeting, you take your Microsoft Lens, which allow you to do multiple pages, whack it into one note, shred the paper. I am going to go off and do that as soon as we finish this session to test it because I think that's a really good thing for me to work with, especially yep. I, like, I like writing. I, I can I look through some of the notes and I go, yeah, that's all rubbish. I don't need that. Actually, that's a really important page that I want to put into that note that I've yep. for that meeting that I had. I want to go and put those part those bits and pieces in there so we've got it. Interesting. Cool. Well, I should let you go and do that, Trevor. Thank you once again for a I will. I will. Far side chat. I reckon we've. Uh, I reckon anybody who takes something. Well, I've already taken. I've taken three or four things straight out of this session that's going to help my business. Um, I reckon a lot of people listening are going to do exactly the same thing and going to go and try a few of these bits and pieces. But at the end of the day, the tools that they need to use are there and available and part of your Office 365 subscription. Cool. So I got, I got an email last week with the 80th most popular technology podcast in Australia. Woohoo! Which is kind of cool. Yeah, that is good. Video. Stop mucking around so much. Yeah, we were going to have a. <laughs> we get into that political argument we we're having yesterday. That'd be fun. Yeah, we're, no, we're not going to. We're not going to do that in the live stream. We we have very differing political views. That would be lots of fun. We should. We should just. We, we maybe we'll do want to just record it, and if it's okay, we'll publish it. Have but a, what's good, Nick? We could still be friends, and and everybody needs yeah. to understand. That. Just because I disagree with you doesn't mean I hate you, right? No, <laughs> that's right. It's nothing personal. <laughs> absolutely absolutely all right well thanks right, again man. nick yeah um, you my have a pleasure good... thank you trevor you have a good day and for everybody who's listening or watching thank you so much please give us a like or subscribe if you haven't if you're watching on facebook on linkedin or youtube we really appreciate you being there leave us a comment if there's something you'd like us to discuss and we'll, we'll pick up the concepts and, and we'll run with it um hope you enjoyed this session and um have a fantastic day see you later cheers Trev. bye-bye